Hi, I'm D. Lee Beard, and you're watching Ask the Techies. This is an internet show where we answer your viewer questions, and you can send us your questions at questions at askthetechies.com. Today's viewer questions, this one's from Eddie. Eddie asks, I recently purchased a used MacBook Pro with Tiger Discs. I have a Leopard uh, install disc for my son's new MacBook Pro. I want to install Leopard, but when I try to um, update the Tiger, I get a message saying I couldn't install OS X on this computer. How do I go about installing Leopard, and if I am successful, will Snow Leopard mount straight on without having to deal with my data? Well, uh, Eddie, one of the things I want to point out to you is when you buy a new MacBook Pro or any kind of Mac, they give you a disk, install disk for the computer in case you ever have to wipe your whole hard drive, you can reinstall it. Usually those disks cannot be used on another computer. They're specific for that computer model. You try to take it to somewhere else, it's not going to work. So that's why that's not working for you. If you buy an upgrade from Apple, you can use those disks on any computer because they don't know which computer that you're actually going to install it on. So you should be fine using ones that you buy directly from Apple. So don't lose those because if you do lose those and you try to use your son's uh, because yours got scratched or damaged, uh, the ones that were meant for his MacBook Pro, mm, that's not going to work. Uh, you'll have to get another copy of the, uh, of the software. Okay, uh, so hopefully that'll answer your question. And um, you shouldn't have to do a complete erase. You should be able to install Leopard right over top of Tiger just fine. However, it's always a good idea to back up your data beforehand just in case. It's a good idea to back up your data no matter what because you never know. Well, what I heard once was it's not a matter of when your hard drive fails, it's a matter of when. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when your hard drive fails. So always make sure you back up your data. Um, external hard drive, they're really cheap. Um, at dealmac.com you can find some really great deals to try to find uh, things. I, I don't actually you know, get any compensation from dealmac. But if you, I'll point this out to you real quick. Let me go to this and go. Here's dealmac and you can subscribe to them. But they have the latest deals right up here. You can scroll down and look for deals for MP3 players, photo, um, Phones and handhelds, displays, storage, here we go. Here's an 80 gigabyte for 220. It's actually kind of expensive. Um, here's an other world computing, which is a brand I actually recommend. And they have some prices here for depending on which ones you want. A two terabyte for two seventy-nine ninety-nine. That's uh, a lot of storage. Um, if you do a lot of video editing, that would be the way to go. Um, but it's good to try to back up. They have a lot of deals here and they change constantly uh, depending on what you're wanting to get. Here's a half a terabyte for 109 bucks. So it depends on what you want. I saw one for like 80 bucks. Um, but keep beware of some brands. I have heard that Western Digital is not quite as good a brand. That I've heard a lot of people have fail rates issues. And um, if that's your backup and your other one failed, that can really make you it's very sad. It's not really a good idea to go cheap, too cheapo. Um, on that. So you might want to read some reviews of different brands on that. Okay? So hopefully that answers your question. Next question. This one comes from Emmanuel. He says, I was just wondering if you can make a video using compressor because I want to convey my movies in HD. Okay. Well, let me show you how to use compressor. I may not have covered this in my Final Cut Pro series that I did. Uh, let me hide that. But in Final Cut, you know, you have a video in here. Well, basically what I have here is a little picture that I just kind of animated a little bit. And but normally what you do in Final Cut is you go Final Cut, Export, and you go using compressor. Now in the new version, by the way, the one that just came out um, in uh, September 2009, uh, this is October 2009, by the way, uh, the, in the new version, you actually go to Send To, and it shows up over here uh, for compressor. Just want to make sure, because when you install the new version, it may be a little confusing on where to find it. But it works pretty much the same way. So you go Export using compressor, and then it's going to send your video to compressor. So your video is right up here. And then what you need to do is then just choose what you want to do. Now up here are your settings. Now what I usually do is move this because I don't usually export more than one video at a time. Eh, didn't mean to do that. If I can get to the corner and pull that up. Eh. Hit that. There we go. I'm just going to resize this. I usually pull this way up and I pull this one down here so I can see the settings better. And in here, you find your different settings. And so you have your Apple devices, you have DVD. Uh, the new version actually has HD DVD, which is something I don't believe this version does have. No, it actually does have some HD DVD. The new compressor does support Blu-ray 
um, DVD, by the way. Close out a DVD. For what I typically do for high def, and you could use the high def DVD, but what I actually do is the Apple TV version, which is a high definition version. It's a 1280 by 720. And when you subscribe to my show, the high def version, then you can get it in the 720. And it looks pretty darn good on a you know LCD TV, say in your living room, if you hook up your iPod or, or Apple TV to your TV. And so that's the way I do it for high definition. I don't feel like most people need the 1080 pixels. It's just not needed to have that much detail. Not for my show anyway, but if your stuff does, um, you can go in and you know adjust the settings and, and export something even larger. Uh, do beware though, because it, having to decode something even larger can be difficult. So when I, when I click on this, I can, what I do is I drag it up on top of my video file from Final Cut. I let go, and it adds it. And then when I click on it here, it shows up the settings over here, and I can go through the inspector and take a look at the different settings. And here's for Apple TV, and I can change the bit rate. I often shrink mine down and find I still get pretty good quality even when I pull that down, and it makes the file sizes a little bit smaller for people downloading this off of the web. Um, and um, you can come over here and see, can you change some of the other settings on there? Yeah. So, yeah, there's not much you can do on that setting. However, you can actually go directly to the H.264 setting. I'm going to close the Apple devices, and you will find formats, QuickTime, H.264, then you can drag that up there, and you can send different formats, and that's what I do, is I actually export at the same time, both formats. By the way, the new Final Cut Pro lets you export and still edit at the same time. It's amazing. It'll export whatever the one was before you edited it. But I click on the H.264, and over here, I'll find settings to where I can adjust how big I want it to be. Now, in this case, it's the frame size is going to be 100% of the source, but I can choose to be a certain size. If I want it to be 1920 by 1080, I can make it that way. So it will be really large. And I come over here and change my settings, video settings, and that's where I can adjust things to make it a high quality, low quality, uh, do automatic or restrict. If you restrict, your high def is going to be really low quality. It's going to be pixelated, so there's not a whole lot of point. I would just go with the automatic. And also the audio settings, you can change that as well. But that's how you would use the compressor in Final Cut Pro to uh, export your videos. One other thing is over here, you have a source. And if you, right, if you click on that, right click on that, let me get my right click to work here. And you can go destination, and that's where you can choose a different location. So if you want it to export to your external hard drive, then you can do that. And that's pretty common for someone who's working on a, a high-end video project. You don't want to run that off of your boot drive, like your laptop drive. You want to run it off of an external drive. So and that's where you can choose a different one than what they automatically give. Because their default settings are like your desktop or your mov movies folder. Eh, probably not for professionals. You want to go directly to the movies folder. Okay. All right, so hopefully that answers your question. Next, uh, last question for the day is from Raphael. Raphael says, I just got my new iPod on my birthday and it was working fine. Until Sunday, my iPod just shut down completely. I can't turn it on, it won't connect to iTunes, nothing. I asked my cousin about this problem um, and he said that it's normal because it just means I'm using my iPod too much. No, you're not using your iPod too much. Take that thing back to Apple, to an Apple store, wherever you did buy it, and have them look into it because this should not be happening. You can't use your iPod too much. Um, eventually, you could drain your battery and you may need to plug it in, but if it, it should connect to iTunes. When you plug it into your computer, iTunes should recognize it, and if it's not, then there's something majorly wrong with that one, and you might want to have them look into it, okay? They may have some keyboard shortcuts, ways they can uh, walk you through uh, Apple tech support, which is really good. Um, this should be able to walk you through a couple of steps about how to reset your, your device. Okay? Hopefully that answers your question. Remember, you can send your questions to us at questions at asthetechies.com.